Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the course Physical Chemistry 101. My name is Dr. Lau, and today's topic is how to express the behavior of a pure substance in numbers. The simplest systems consist of only a single component that is correspond to a pure substance. Carbon dioxide, for example. So we have a container in which there is only one kind of particle. How can we describe this system? According to Gibbs phase rule, we need exactly two intensive state variables, for example, molar volume and temperature. If you have chosen these two variables, we have described state of this system completely. All the remaining state variables are thus defined. Note the boundaries of the system, one of which is movable so that we can adjust the molar volume. We are also able to change the temperature and thus choosing two state variables freely and thus max out Gibbs two degrees of freedom. Of course we can measure more state variables such as pressure, for instance. In our system, there is one mole of carbon dioxide, 44 grams. We now set it to a number of different states. State 1 is described by a molar volume of 25 liters and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. In this state, the system is a gas a homogeneous single phase, a pressure of one bar adjusts. So much for state 1, which changes the state by keeping the temperature constant, 25 degrees Celsius, and compressing the molar volume to 12.5 liters. State number 2. Well, having chosen two state variables, all other state variables are set. For example, the pressure adjusts to two bar. The system remains in a gaseous form. If we now increase the temperature at constant pressure to 322 degrees Celsius, the volume increases to 25 degrees. State 3, again gases. A further isothermal compression to 12.5 liters provides a pressure of 4 bars. In state 4, the system still is a gas. These are four of infinitely many states of a pure substance. Carbon dioxide, for example. I can plot these and other states of the one component system into a diagram. We choose a PBT diagram. The axes of the three dimensional diagram correspond to the three state variables pressure, temperature, and molar volume. Every state corresponds to a point in this diagram. State 1 and 2 at room temperature, state 3 and 4 at higher temperatures. All possible gaseous states of the system lie on a so-called surface of states. This surface of states in the PVT diagram is curved in a typical way. It's a phase diagram of an ideal gas. This behavior is specified by nature. It's just a compilation of many, many experimental data. Our task as a scientist is to describe the three-dimensional plot, at least mathematically, as some kind of function, 
and to develop theories as to why the surface of states looks just like that and does it look different. We want to extend our phase diagram and include heterogeneous two-phase states, setting conditions in which liquid and solid phases are involved. We start uh, on state 1 and then cool down at constant pressure, 1 bar pressure, to negative 78.5 degrees Celsius. In this state, both solid and gaseous carbon dioxide coexist. The molar volume is only 94 milliliters. State 2 is heterogeneous. Two phases, gas and solid, are simultaneously present. According to Gibbs, a two-phase, one-component system does only have one degree of freedom. And so I may now reduce the molar volume without changing temperature or pressure. Only the ratio solid to gas changes. Only when the molar volume is reduced to 28 milliliters, the gas phase disappears and only solid phase remains. In state 3, our system now consists just of a block of solid carbon dioxide, also known as dry ice. Liquid carbon dioxide does not exist at a pressure of 1 bar. In order to liquefy carbon dioxide, we have, for example, start from state 1 and compress isothermally from 25 liters to 94 milliliters. This is going to be state number 4. If we do so, a portion of carbon dioxide will liquefy. And we get a two-phase system and the pressure will adjust to 60 bars. These are three more states of carbon dioxide at considerably higher pressures and lower temperatures than the gaseous states we've discussed before. If we measure all states, or very, very many states of carbon dioxide, and plot them as points into our PBT diagram, we end up with a complete, typical phase diagram of a pure substance. Here we see the four states. Which we have just discussed. Each point corresponds to a possible state. All possible states give an area or a surface in PVT space, which is a more or less curved area and exhibit some discontinuities, some kinks. This diagram will be our common thread to many of the basic principles of thermodynamics. We will discuss many phenomena with it. Well, when dealing with phase diagrams, just like this, it's useful to look First, for the homogeneous regions. Which areas correspond to single phase states? Low molar volume and low temperature are characteristic for the solid phase. High temperatures and high molar volumes correspond to a homogeneous gas phase. At medium temperatures and molar volumes, liquid phase is present. So these are the homogeneous regions of the phase diagram. All other regions in this diagram correspond to multi-phase states. Between homogeneous solid and homogeneous liquid region, the two-phase solid liquid states are located. The lines that separate the homogeneous areas from the heterogeneous ones in the diagram are called binodal curves or binodals. 
Here you see another binodal curve, the boundary of the liquid gas region. In the heterogeneous regions, in which our system has only one degree of freedom, we can draw so-called tie lines. Tie lines are connection lines between two phases which coexist in equilibrium. For example, a tie line runs between state 3 and 2 and also beyond in the two-phase region solid gas. This is a tie line. Tie lines are always straight lines as they are either forms and either bars, pressure and temperature constant. Another tie line is passing through the state 4, can be extended to this point. All isotherms and isobars in the two phase regions are tie lines. A very special tie line is a so called triple line. On this line, you see it here. Three phases, solid, liquid, and gas, coexist. Another characteristic feature in the graph is the maximum of the binodal curve of the liquid gas region. This looks like an inverted or upside down parabola. This maximum is called the critical point. Above the critical point, Gas and liquid are indistinguishable. The states are now called supercritical fluids. To simplify the three dimensional PVT diagram, often two dimensional projections are used. Either projections on the PV plane or projections on the PT plane. The process from state 1 to state 4 in the PT phase diagram is a simple vertical line. Now for thermal compression. In the PV phase diagram, this same process corresponds to a curve with a discontinuity, a kink. First, the pressure increases during compression. The two phase region then results in a horizontal straight line. A compression on a tie line. We can also draw the projections of the binodal curve in the PV diagram. When projecting into the PT diagram, the two phase regions are reduced to lines and the triple line becomes a triple point. Tie lines are no longer to be found here. All tie lines are reduced to points. In the PT diagram. For the sake of clarity, we will restrict our further discussion to the gas phase region of the phase diagram. According to IUPAC, the standard state of the system was set to 25 degrees Celsius and 1 bar. Carbon dioxide is a gas at standard state. The point S corresponds to this state. In the standard state, carbon dioxide has a molar volume of about 24.8 liters. Interestingly, each gas has about this molar volume at standard state. DIN standard 3043 defines the so called normal condition or normal state, STP abbreviated, to 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere. This is 1.013 bar. Under normal conditions, the molar volume of an ideal gas is slightly lower than under standard conditions, about 22.4 liters. Some slopes of the surface of states in the PVT diagram 
have specific meanings. The partial derivative of the molar volume with respect to temperature and pressure corresponds to gradients, which can be illustrated by the energy of height profile. In our PVT landscape, we can walk in north-south direction and experience a certain slope, the red one, or we look in east-west direction and maybe see a different slope. If we keep pressure constant, the partial derivative of the molar volume with respect to temperature, that is the north south direction, is associated with the thermal expansion coefficient alpha. The steeper the slope, the larger alpha. If we keep temperature constant, the partial derivative of the molar volume with respect to pressure, that is, we're looking east-west direction, left to right, corresponds to the compressibility kappa. It's the relationship between molar volume and pressure. The steeper the slope, the more sensitive is molar volume to the change in pressure. Because molar volume is a state variable, it clearly depends on two and only two state variables. Mathematically speaking, molar volume has a total differential. dV clearly depends on dT and dP. The factors that stand in front of dT and dP, in red and in green, are the partial derivatives of the molar volume. And these correspond to the slopes just discussed. The expansion coefficient alpha and the compressibility kappa. To conclude, let me summarize what we've learned about a phase diagram of a one component system. In order to describe the state of a pure substance clearly, we need two state variables. For example, molar volume and temperature. If we do a graphical representation of all possible states of a single component system, we obtain a surface of states in the PVT space. This surface consists of homogeneous, homogeneous and heterogeneous areas, separated by binodal curves. In the heterogeneous areas, we may draw tie lines. Lines that connect phases in equilibrium. Other characteristics of the phase diagram are the critical point, the critical point here, and the triple line. The isothermal and isobaric slopes of the PVT surface, the partial derivatives, are associated with the compressibility and the thermal expansion coefficient. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.